basically, okay, so give a little context. So I'm not going to read it. I'm going to go back. Give a little context. There are like this band of uh, renegades, Star Wars-esque, that have just toppled, not toppled, but like struck a blow against the evil galactic power. <laughs> um, and uh, so now the, ch the book picks up with like, hey, they've, they've scored this victory. Now it's the, the war is kind of beginning. Um, all right. Uh, what? Kate asked, agitated. Uh, nothing, nothing at all, Kira said. I just didn't know you were so delicate, but it's fine. Totally cool. Kate groaned. You know, even by our standards, this is excessively stupid. Kate, Kira put her hands up. Hey, don't look at me. This is your friend's idea. Huh? Came Mig's voice from the cargo hold where he was tinkering with something or other. Is Kate complaining again? I'm not complaining, Kate said. I'm just, I'm just processing. Verbally, I'm verbally processing. Verbally processing your complaint, Kira said. We got it. You know what? I'm ready, Kate said. I'm ready to jump out of this ship. Such a sensitive chosen one, Mig snickered. He stepped in front of Kate and started fiddling with his grab suit. I'm just going to shut this clasp. If you're going to leap into the cold, deadly abyss of space, it's best to do. If, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, it's best to do so if your enclosure is airtight. Cade rolled his shoulders, unable to find any comfort inside the cumbersome exoskeleton. Grav suits were nothing new. Crew members used them all the time, especially on larger starships, to make exterior repairs. But in those instances, the grav suits were tethered to the ship. They moved slowly and safely. Mig's version was neither slow nor safe. He reinforced Kier's, Kier's grav suit so the exterior were harder to penetrate, but Cade was less concerned with the ramifications of taking enemy fire and more concerned with the suit's propulsion capabilities, which, thanks to Mig's upgrades, could now power a small starhopper. Having that kind of power right beneath his feet and hands didn't sit well with Cade, especially since he was supposed to use that power to propel himself through space and hope nothing went wrong. And in this case, wrong would send Cade careening off into space where he'd die a long, excruciating death. Kate had one fear in life, and that was it. If he could take on a squad of Praxian drones <clears throat> with hands so steady you could rest your drink on them, he could fly any ship through a furious dogfight with a smile on his face. While he didn't relish the idea of meeting the sharp end of a Quanta staff or being incinerated by enemy starfighter, at least those ends would be quick. But comforting the vast emptiness of space, where he'd float for days and do nothing but think, that scared the crap out of him. The ship was rocked by enemy fire again, and Cade nearly lost his lunch. You know, Kira said, if I can hand over the controls of my ship to your cranky droid, you should be, or sorry, drone. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, we'll get that in the paperback. Uh, you should be able to handle this. <laughs> um, I, think it's, I think the rest are right. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, I never thought I'd say this, but for the first time, Duke, who is the drone, drone in question, uh, is the least of my problems, Kate said. From over his shoulder, Cade heard Forkel's heavy gait as he lumbered down the cargo hold's ramp. He whistled a monotone tune as he joined Cade, Mir, and Kig. Personally, I'm excited, the drone said. He'd been equipped with the propulsion units, but he didn't need the grav suit because apparently nothing could kill him. So you like the idea of hurling through space with a questionable amount of control over your body, Kate said. Why am I not surprised? I'll be like a graceful speck among the cosmos, as close as I'll ever be to being united with the fabric that binds all sentient life. Kate and Kira shot a curious, shared a curious look. Or, F Forkel continued, a weapon of massive power out to exact my destructive purpose. That's more like it, Kira said. Mig punched in the code on the cargo hold's control panel. The door's <clears throat> uh, hold lowered slowly, revealing a deep blackness punctuated by print pricks of stars. From here, the drop to the Kandarian trade ship should take no more than two minutes, Kate Mig informed them. Use the suit exactly like I showed you, let it do most of the work, and you're good. Mig joined Kara, Cade, and Forkel, and together they walked toward the <clears throat> lip of the cargo door. In just seconds, they'd be jumping off it. Cade tried to convince himself that he was relieved to finally have it done with. He'd been sweating the solution to liberating the Praxis of occupied Kundarian vessel ever since it was conceived, and no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't bring himself to liking it. In fact, he hated it. Oh! One other thing, Mig yelled over the din of the cargo door's hydraulic system. Do not forget the last thing I told you. Cade shot a panic-tricken look at Mig. Wait, what, he asked? What last thing? Huh, Mig said, holding his armored hand up to where his ear was beneath his helmet. Sorry, I can't hear you. What last thing? You didn't... 
Kay looked over and saw Kira pr practically bursting as she tried to hold in her, her laughter. Oh, hilarious, Kate said, real mature. Still can't hear you, Migtoid. Then read my lips, Kate yelled, and he mouthed a very pointed obscenity. But then the noise stopped as the door was completely lo lowered. All right, boys, Kira said, time to fly. That's good sound effects. That's like perfect. <laughs> so, thanks.